In this video, we talk about West Coast Swing for ballroom dancers. What's up, gang? It's Brian B. And Miss Megan. So this is uh, by request, actually. West Coast Swing for ballroom dancers. Now, we're gonna make a couple of assumptions right now. We're gonna assume that you know the basics of West Coast Swing. If you don't, I'll link up a video that we have to cover that. So if you're a ballroom dancer moving over, if you're an existing West Coast Swing dancer, these are gonna be concepts that will be fun and interesting for you to understand. So, the three concepts we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk a little bit about the footwork, not basic footwork, but more technique. Number two, we're gonna talk about the connections we use in West Coast Swing. And then three, the holy grail, the stretch on the anchor step that we see uh, uh, ballroom dancers struggling with. And for context, I did start in the country swing world, but I have spent quite a bit of time dancing ballroom, so I do speak ballroom as well. Megan has danced in all four styles in ballroom. So, we got some skills. Let's start talking. So first thing we're gonna talk about is the footwork in West Coast Swing. So I like to explain it this way. West, and you can jump in if you disagree. West Coast Swing and Cha Cha are the same, right? Because I have the same feet and legs. So one of the drills I would teach in uh, Cha Cha would be to take my feet together, pull my toes out just slightly, and bend and straighten my legs, right? This would be a Cha Cha thing. We're settling into our hip, right? We'd be striking the foot, straightening the knee and settling into the hip. In West Coast Swing, we don't spend our time settling into the hip, we spend our time rolling through the foot. So if this were cha-cha and I was back breaking on this foot, the toe-ball heel connection to the floor would happen rather, rather quickly, very staccato, and I would spend my time settling into my hip and my rib cage and using a lot of body rhythm. In West Coast Swing, we would take that same step, we would strike the ball of the foot, and we would delay the roll. So instead of striking quickly so that I can settle through my hip and having a very heavy, ballroomy looking, Latin y kind of feel to my West Coast <laughs> swing, right? Feels weird. Which, if you're a ballroom <laughs> dancer and those are the techniques that you have mastered for cha cha, rumba, mambo, those types of things, that's gonna be your default and you're gonna not look very West Coast swingy, right? If you're a West Coast swing dancer, those techniques might be foreign to you. So instead of striking the foot and moving heavy into that hip, which is what I would do in a cha-cha rumba type of situation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step and roll through my foot so that I'm using my feet and legs. So the drill that we would use for that would be to roll through the foot. So we're gonna take the right foot, we're gonna go roll, roll, and we're gonna step to the side and delay. And again, this is just a drill to get you rolling through the legs. I'm gonna let Megan do that uh, this direction. While well, she keeps going, I'm gonna go sideways. So you can see it's a lot more leg action rather than if this was cha-cha, right? I'd be settling into my hip. So that's number one. Now, you can pull from your ballroom dance background or West Coast Swing dancers, you can learn from the ballroom dance background. So for us in dancing ballroom dances like waltz and things, we roll through our foot from heel to toe, right? So we can reverse that, and I'll let you talk a little bit about walking forward, where we can take some of what we know in ballroom and apply it to West Coast. So you can either do heel leads or toe leads. Right now we're gonna explain some heel leads here. Um, rolling through your heel to your toe, it gives you a longer period to stay connected to your partner, and it's going to just take your time getting through, rolling through your foot. And it's going to kind of give you that west coasty look so when walking forward we got a couple of different options you can if we make this like latin dancing right i can strike immediately right in west coast swing we do dance on the ball of the foot quite a bit of time but you can also walk forward heel to toe right this is not a no-no mm -mm. in the west coast swing world right it it would be if you were dancing uh cha-cha rumba and oh. you stepped on a heel lead no heel leads. bad 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 right but in west coast swing what's fun about it is we can pull from all of these different things so when we talk about footwork it is totally acceptable to walk forward on the ball of the foot right that's kind of one look it's also acceptable to walk heel to toe heel to toe and float through that way but the one thing we want to stay away from is being very heavy in the hip you don't want to end up having your West Coast looking very 
I have a hard time doing <laughs> it nowadays, it. right? Where it's heavy <laughs> into the hip. You want to delay the hip action and roll through the feet and legs and make it much lighter, right? Mm -hmm. So that's number one, like uh, footwork wise would make people look different. Number two, connections are extremely important in West Coast Swing. And I do yes, have a, a ballroom dance background. Fun story, years ago I was working with a top West Coast Swing pro and my uh, American Rhythm coach. They were teaching a lesson, talking about body weight. They were teaching the same lesson. So the fundamentals are the same but how much we pay attention to it as West Coast Swing Dancers matters a lot. Three connections we need to master, and then we'll talk about the subtleties within them before we get to the anchor step and the stretch. Number one is an away connection where our centers are moving away from one another. Number two is our centers moving towards one another, right? So we have to be able to feel that. Now, if we're dancing like cha-cha, we work off a back break, right? You'll see my center move towards Megan, right? and then her center moves away, and then mine moves away, right? And then it moves towards. So we're using those in ballroom dancing. However, we have to pay much more attention to them in West Coast. We'll talk about that when we get to the anchor step. So this is one, is an away connection. Number two is a towards connection. The third one, and it's what's allowing us to have all these cool modern moves, is a rotational connection, right? So that means if Megan is rotating, the way we kind of teach this is as she rotates, she keeps going until something stops her, right? And that's where you get a lot of these types of rotational movements, right? That turn into things is that Megan isn't paying attention to the lead purely linearly. She's paying attention to that rotation. And sometimes all at the same time. You Some, want to pay attention to connection down for and up, connection sideways, away, towards, all at the same time. So here's a good easy one to think about. If we think linear steps, right? We go sugar push. We're in a towards connection and we go back away, right? So we're thinking very linearly. We could also then take and learn a sugar tuck and think very linearly, right? We could come in to a forward connection and now we're in a way connection. We could think very linearly. But if we add a rotational feel to it, right, then this becomes much, we have a lot more options stylistically, and it also leads us into a lot more options in terms of patterns because of that rotational connection. So, number two, to be more a West Coasty, and for the West Coast dancers, um, that third rotational connection is very important. If we did this on the sugar tuck, right, we could then use this rotationally and then Megan's following it rotationally and she's going to go to the end of that connection. But because of where I've fed it, it's allowed her footwork to change and we've got different patterns. We're not going to get into that, but I just want you to be aware of that rotational connection, which gets into the holy grail of West Coast Swing, which is the anchor step and the stretch. So we need to find a way to stretch in West Coast Swing and really elongate that connection between us. So we need to have one point before we get there, which is count four, two, three, and four, right? Which is before the anchor step of five and six, we need to at this point achieve an away connection before we build into a stretch into the next pattern, right? So a good way to think about this, especially even for you West Coast Swing dancers is Whatever my connection is on count four, or I'm sorry, on my anchor step, whatever my maximum connection is, that's a 10 for you as a couple. Whether you have a heavy or light connection, that's a 10. On count four, we want to get to about a five. So we're at a 10, our most stretched connection to start. Whatever that is for you, one, two, three, and count four. At this point, we feel in a way connection about half of what we would maximally. Now as we combine rolling through the feet, the first step, as we roll through the feet, we can roll our weight back and elongate that connection and elongate that stretch until we get to a 10 on our list and off we go. So the key is on count four of your patterns, one, two, three, and four, or at least count four of your six count patterns, you have about half as much connection as you will when you finish. I use the roll through the feet to stretch away and now our centers are moving away and we can go into some of the stuff, Ooh, rotational connections and the like. Do you have anything to add as we talk about West Coast Swing for ballroom dancers? Um, it's just 
different connection wise like most ballroom stuff is in a closed hold which you will find that in west coast and slightly different in west coast you're going to really connect a little bit more heavily back in this hand than i think you do in ballroom but um you just have to pay attention to the connections a lot more than in ballroom and i think the reason why right in ballroom dancing we learn from a syllabus so you have to learn the basic moves and then you can lead and follow those basic moves and that happens in west coast as well right we learn the basic push pass whip and then we are able to lead and follow those moves but very quickly from there west coast swing the wheels come off and everything is possible yeah. whereas in ballroom when you're dealing with that amount of complex choreography it's usually much more in a routine mm -hmm. right and so yes we're worried about in waltz we're worried about dropping our weight and we're worried about leading rotational connections and things like that but we're doing it from a very specific position right mm -hmm. megan knows darn well what move happens <laughs> after this right so we have to match it and become she used to right we we have to match it and become good at all those connections i'm not going to throw a variation at her right so the amount of she has to pay attention getting into that movement and paying attention to her linear connections, rotational connections is much higher. So there are three things you can focus on to improve your West Coast swingness as a ballroom dancer in West Coast swing. So love you guys. Uh, we will see you next week in the next video. Make sure you like and subscribe, like the video, show it a little love. Give some comments if you've got some ideas, uh, some things that have been helpful for you, either moving from West Coast to Ballroom or Ballroom to West Coast. And we will see you again in the next video. Mm -hmm.